This is Mac OS Ken. Assessing orders for iPhone 14 Zs. Battery news and bug news for Apple's latest phones. An early adoption looks good for iOS 16. It is Friday, the 16th of September, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We've talked all week about using therapy to help solve problems, but maybe the problem isn't something that can be solved. Put another way, maybe the problem isn't the presenting issue, but how you're dealing with it. Can you tell the difference? And do you know what to do? If you're not sure, consider better help. Sometimes we talk ourselves into ideas or reinforce thinking in ourselves that can be counterproductive. Talking to a professional counselor can help us out of that. Now, there's a lot that's great about better help. It's convenient, it's accessible, it's more affordable than traditional therapy, and it's entirely online. In the past, I have really liked being able to text my therapist just to check in and bounce ideas. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash macOSken today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash macOSken. Betterhelp.com slash macOSken. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. Thursday afternoon slash evening, 9 to 5 Mac ran a piece saying lines had started forming at Apple stores around the world, full of people, full of hope that they might be able to nab a new iPhone. And who knows, that might have been the best way to do it, since, according to a separate piece from 9 to 5 Mac, Apple let some pre-ordered people know Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that the phone that was supposed to deliver today, it wouldn't be delivered today. That was according to posts on Twitter as well as messages to 9to5Mac from readers. I actually got a similarly disappointing message from a listener earlier this week. David wrote to me saying that he had ordered his iPhone first thing last Friday morning, Originally, it was supposed to deliver today. However, on Tuesday, he got an email from Apple saying that there had been a change to his delivery date. Needless to say, it was not coming early. It's now scheduled to hit his house sometime between the 27th and the 29th of September. And needless to say, he is not pleased. The way David put it, Apple really dropped the ball this time. From a customer service standpoint, it's hard to disagree. At the same time, it starts to look like Apple is dealing with unprecedented or, at the very least, unexpected demand for iPhone 14 at the pro end, which is what David had ordered. David Lum, not the David who wrote to me, has penned a piece for CNET under the headline, What the Worse Pre-Orders for iPhone 14 Really Mean? Spoiler he thinks it's good news. The piece starts with an assertion from TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. I told you about his Medium post earlier this week. That was the one that said pre-order results for iPhone 14 Pro Max, Pro, and two standard models are good, neutral, and bad, respectively, versus iPhone 13 series. It's also the one that said the pre-order results for iPhone 14 and 14 Plus is worse than iPhone SE 3 and iPhone 13 mini, both of which had their orders cut in the first half of this year. The iPhone 14 Plus is the replacement for iPhone 13 mini, he continued. However, this new product's pre-order result is significantly lower than expected, meaning Apple's product segmentation strategy for standard models fails this year. Sounds dour, though CNET's lum sees something positive in that cloud. 
between the lack of big changes between the consumer-level iPhone 13 and the consumer-level iPhone 14 and the relatively short financial hop between an iPhone 14 and an iPhone 14 Pro. The scene that suggestion seems to be that people aren't staying away from iPhone 14 as much as they're gravitating toward the Pro end of that line. In 2022, writes Lum, it is easier than ever to go Pro. Perhaps supporting, perhaps inspiring that thinking is Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives. Lum's report has Ives saying, in terms of the base iPhone 14 compared to the price points, it's just too compelling to do iPhone 14 Pro. The carrier discounts and promotions are significant. Mr. Ives has a positive rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is 220 bucks. Still seeing no movement in delivery dates as iPhone 14 Plus. Due out on the 7th of October, a piece from Mac Rumors says Apple's gigantic 6.7-inch replacement for the iPhone mini line is facing no delays for delivery nearly a week after pre-orders opened. The piece says that that indicates demand for the new model may be low. Indicates may be. Suggests the possibility. We don't know. And even if we do know, we don't know why. Maybe people don't want iPhone 14 Plus. Maybe Apple made just the right amount. Maybe people are waiting to order it later since it's coming out later. Maybe the extra month will let Apple keep up with demand. And maybe, as CNET suggests, people are skipping the Plus and spending on a Pro instead. Now, leaving the large consumer model aside... Demand for iPhone 14 is better than expected slash feared, according to Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring. A piece from Apple Insider has word of a note he wrote midweek this week, wherein he indicated that demand for the 14 range overall is more robust than expected. Woodring bases his thinking on lead times, or the time it takes for a product to arrive to a consumer after an order. Based on orders in the U.S., his note indicates that the 36-and-a-half-day lead time for iPhone 14 Pro Max is the longest for any iPhone released in the past six years. The 29-and-a-half-day lead time for iPhone 14 Pro is the third longest in the past six years. The six-day lead time for iPhone 14 indicates lower interest in this model from consumers by his thinking and the lack of lengthening lead time for iPhone 14 Plus is likely a function of its later shipping date in the analyst's estimation. Woodring has a positive rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is $180. So what does this all mean? The way Andrew Orr at Apple Insider sees it, Lead times aren't necessarily a complete view of consumer demand, but they can show insight into Apple's supply chain and how it's affected by factors such as inflation. Global pandemics such as COVID-19 and the carry-on effects from it in other industries like shipping costs and times have also affected supply chains around the world. Going a bit more upbeat is the piece with which we started from CNET, Pre-orders after launch are a relatively stable predictor of iPhone sales over the last five years of holiday seasons. While sales could level off after this initial bump of early adopters, it's likely that despite inflation and more conservative consumer spending toward the end of the year, this could be a big holiday season for Apple. In a moment, more on what to expect if you're expecting an iPhone 14... But first, a word from today's sponsor, Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home. Be it ever so humble, you want to keep it safe and with the latest technology available. Old school home security companies set you up with outdated tech, overcharge you for service, and lock you into long contracts. What is it, 1987? Simply Safe lets you pick out just what you need to keep your home safe. You choose the door and window sensors, hazard sensors, cameras. Exactly what you need is exactly what Simply Safe has to offer. Also, you set it up. Sounds daunting, believe me it's not. 
I had my sensors, keypad, and base station set up in under an hour. Now, after that, Simply Safe does its thing. With 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment they see a problem and send police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Their customer first policies make sure you are taken care of with affordable plans starting at less than a dollar a day, no long term contracts, and no hidden fees. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. Go today and claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. S I M P L I. Go to simplysafe.com slash macOS can. Assuming you actually get to get your iPhone 14 Pro Max today, you'll have more power than you might have expected. The piece from Mac Rumors says the battery on Apple's top-of-the-line iPhone lasts two hours longer than the battery in last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's according to a battery test conducted by Tom's Guide meant to simulate real-life usage, including such day-to-day -day activities as downloading apps, playing music, and shooting photos and video. According to the piece, last year's 13 Pro Max ran for 12 hours and 16 minutes on a single charge. This year's Pro Max has upped that to 14 hours and 42 minutes. Now, if you're thinking a bigger battery will do that for you, Mac Rumor says the battery in the 14 Pro Max is actually a little bit smaller than last year's counterpart. This year's model benefits from a more power-efficient display and the new A16 Bionic processor. As current smartphones go, iPhone 14 Pro Max holds the second-best battery life clocked by Tom's Guide. The Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro is tops in terms of battery endurance, putting out about 15 and a half hours on a single charge. One of the most anticipated features featured in the iPhone 14 Pro line is the device's always-on display. Heads up, there are times when it will turn off. A piece from Mac Rumors says Apple is reminding users about eight instances that will take the on out of the always-on display. To save battery life, the piece says the display will go completely dark when the phone is lying face down, when the iPhone is in a pocket or a bag, when sleep focus is turned on, when low power mode is enabled, when the iPhone is connected to CarPlay, when continuity camera is in use, when the iPhone hasn't been used for a while, and the iPhone knows that you have moved away from it when wearing a paired Apple Watch. Also, don't get it wet and never feed it after midnight. A bit of a warning from Apple... If you try to use FaceTime or iMessage with your new iPhone in the 14 line before updating to iOS 16.0.1, stuff might get weird. I told you earlier this week that Apple had pushed out that update specifically for this year's models. Release notes for the update said nothing about FaceTime nor iMessage specifically, and yet... A piece from 9to5Mac has Apple indicating that due to activation issues in iOS 16.0, iMessage and FaceTime may not work properly out of the box. iPhone 14 issues include being unable to receive iMessage or FaceTime calls, as well as green bubbles showing instead of blue bubbles when contacting another iMessage user. Activation issues, you say? Apple's release notes for iOS 16.0.1 earlier this week did say that that update fixes an issue with activation and migration during setup of iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro. According to 9to5Mac, Apple says that iMessage and FaceTime-related issues should be resolved after updating to the latest iOS version. I was talking with a friend earlier this week about the level of excitement around iOS 16's customizable lock screen. That seems to have converted to upgrades. 
Earlier this week, the Mac Observer ran a piece saying that moves from iOS 15 to iOS 16 were slightly higher in the first 24 hours versus last year's first day moves from iOS 14 to 15. According to numbers from Mixpanel, last year's day one upgrades hit 6.71%. This year, it ticked up to 922 Can that continue? Well, it did for at least another 24 hours. A day later, a piece from Mac Rumors had Mixpanel tracking similar performance. In its first 48 hours, last year's iOS 15 was running an estimated 8.5% of compatible phones. In the same 48, this year's iOS 16 was installed on 11.6%. Both Mac Rumors and the Mac Observer list a few features that might be speeding up the converts. Among those listed are the ability to edit and unsend messages in iMessage and the customizable lock screen. Both sites also predict another burst of updates when features like iCloud Shared Photo Library, Matter Support, and New Emoji get added later this year. And finally today... Samsung is borrowing another one of Apple's initiatives. Pretty sure Apple will be cool with this one, though. TechCrunch says the electronics giant will put about $5 billion U.S. into green initiatives through 2030. The piece says the company also plans to make its global operations and products net zero carbon emission by 2050 in an effort to tackle the climate crisis. The piece points out that Apple has committed to being carbon neutral by 2030. Microsoft says it plans to be carbon negative by 2030. TechCrunch says 2050 is obviously less aggressive than 2030. But Samsung has such a massive manufacturing operation, it's going to take a long and heavy lift to get there. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe. Get a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macoscan. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.